Okay, question number 16. The population of rabbits on a large island doubles every year. On January 1, the population is 150 rabbits. This is what we're starting at. All right, if you have studied doubling, then you know that doubling is not a linear type of change. Okay, doubling is exponential. It's exponential growth. And so the model for doubling, if you want to find the total, then you take the starting amount, whatever that happens to be, and you multiply it by 2. Okay, if you want to double something, you multiply it by 2. And how many times you do that is x um, number of years. So that exponent, it's exponential because th the exponent is x here. Um, and that's the number of, um, I'm not going to say years, I'm going to say time periods, right? But I think in this problem it's going to be years. So if I look at this story, it says, which equation can be used to find the number of years, x, and w it will take for the population to reach 4,800. So we want a total population of 4,800. So basically, in this case here, I would put the 4,800 in for the total. Okay, I would say that equals the starting amount, 150, multiplied by 2. to the x power. This is my model. Now, I don't know, do they, yep, they don't use parentheses, but it means the same thing to say, take the 4,800 and say that equals 150 and then a dot, 2 to the x. So that would do it. So that's the equation that you could s solve to find the, the x value, the number of years that it would take to get a population of 4,800. And so that would be d. All right, um, next one, an equation is shown. What values of x make the equation true? Okay, the values of x that make the equation true could be referred to as the solutions. Um, and the, th the nice thing about solutions to any equation, um, they are the zeros. Let me see this. Let me say this. The solutions show up as the x-intercepts on the graph. Okay? So solutions can also be called the zeros of the function. They're the solutions when the equation equals zero. So this equation equals zero. So we can find the solutions using technology if we just graph this equation and see what are the x-intercepts. That's when it equals zero. Um, and so 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, using your technology here, the graphing, you might come up to scientific if you pull that calculator up while you're taking the test, but choose the graphing menu. And again, we want 2x squared and then minus 5x minus 3. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. If I look at this graph, where are the x-intercepts? I'm going to say there's an obvious one at 3, and then a little less obvious, but still pretty apparent, there looks like another x-intercept at negative half, negative 0.5. So I'm going to say those are the two solutions, Neg at, um, x equals positive 3 and x equals negative half. So let's go over here, x equals 3, x equals negative 0.5. Um, before I would enter these, I would check this to make sure that they actually work. And so let's just do a quick check right here, um, 2x squared minus 5 times x minus 3 needs to equal 0. So if I put 3 in here, I get 
2 times 9, that's 18. 18 minus 15 is 3. Minus 3 again is 0. So that 3, value of 3, if I plug it into the equation, sure enough it works. If I test 0 0.5, with it being a decimal, you can use a calculator, negative 0.5 negative 0.5. What I end up with here is 2 times positive 0.25. That's half. And then I end up with plus 2.5. Half plus 2.5 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. And so again, my admonition to you is to make sure that you plug your suspected solutions into the equation to verify that they make the equation true. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 half or negative 0.5. All right, that is using technology. Now, it's also possible to solve this completely algebraically without the graph if you are a good factorer. Because if we have a quadratic equation and it is set equal to 0, then if we factor it and set the factors equal to 0, we can find our solutions. This one is harder to factor because the lead term is 2x squared instead of 1x squared, so this makes the factoring harder, but I'm going to put 2x times x, and then I need a product of negative 3, so I'm going to put negative 3 here and plus 1 here, and then I'm going to check this. Okay, if I check this out, 2x times x gives me 2x squared, and then minus 6x, and then plus 1x, and then minus 3. And sure enough, that gives me a middle term of minus 5x. So I factored it correctly. Now I'm going to set the factors equal to 0. And I get x is equal to positive 1. Oops. That was supposed to be a plus there. x is equal to negative 1 half. This is why you have to check your answers so that if you make a sign mistake like I almost just did, you can catch it. And then this solution here is x equals positive 3. So it's the same solutions that we saw by looking at the x-intercepts on the graph, but that's the key here. The solutions to any equation, specifically a quadratic one, will show up as the x-intercepts on the graph. So by looking at the graph and seeing the x-intercepts, you can quickly get a good idea of what the, the solutions are, and you can test your estimates just to confirm them. Okay. Um, did I do 16 on the same video? Let me see. Yep, I think that's good for this video.